Welcome back to the World Athletics Club. We are actually on day seven and we're here at the University of Oregon campus, right at the heart of Tracktown, USA. We have a lot of exciting stuff still coming up, but first let's take a look at all the exciting stuff that happened yesterday on day six. And in China goes next. She was fifth in Doha. Miss Sandra Perkovich is one of her heroes and that is some opening round. 69 meters and 12 centimeters. Has Sandra Perkovic got anything else more in the tank in this second round? But she likes that too much, just drops her head to the side. That's below the gold medal line there. The well, Chinese athlete, 69 meters and 12 centimeters in the opening round. Has she got any more? Does she care? She doesn't, but it was her first round throw, 69 meters. That's going to take that gold medal back to China. She leads with 300 metres to run into the back straight for the final time. Every hurdle now absolutely critical. Gets a two there. Will it work? Who have gets a two? The 26 year old, a 907 athlete heading for a maximal person best here if she can keep this going. 200 to run. Back in fourth place, Makita Zabebe again. Can the 21 year old get on terms with his three in front of her? And Yavi takes that final water jump awfully. She lost three or four metres there. Geruto into the home straight, gets a two, grimacing, big and powerful, but she hasn't got the legs surely to catch Nora Geruto now. And she cruises towards the finish. It's going to be gold for Kazakhstan. The gap is widening all the time. And look at the clock. She's going to pulverise the championship record. Gold and what a goal for Nora Geruto. Boy, oh boy. Kazakhstan have gold. Ethiopia have silver. A baby does get the bronze. <laughs> Joe, oh, matching the celebration of um, El Bakali on the men's side. He took, gave, went and gave himself a swim. So, Alison de Santos, <laughs> he's uh, worked super hard so far these championships, not put a foot wrong. Gold medal in the 400 meter hurdles. And to top it off, he has been challenged to a dance off by Bigfoot. Sometimes these races are just too close to call. So we're gonna take you to our photo finish room where we determine which athletes take bronze, silver, or gold. My name is Janet Nixon and I'm from Australia and I am the international photo finish judge. The camera takes the photos and we look at the photo, which is a series of short photos in time and we choose which part of the image is representing the leading edge of the torso and that represents a time and we make that judgment as to which athlete gets there first based on the torso. So first place was pretty straightforward. He was just out there, his torso was clear. Second and third were quite close and we were able to look at both the outfield camera, which was our principal, and the infield camera, which gave us the view from the other side. And by looking at both of them, we could separate the two athletes. And in fact, there was daylight between them when we look at it. So we're taking 2000 lines a second and they were quite easily separated in the end. There's a moderate amount of pressure that's definite. We know that there are a lot of people watching, but in fact, we just focus on doing the job. Every race is just like another race. You just read it, you get it right. And if it's easy, you get it fast. And if it's not easy, you take your time. But the first thing is you get it right. So for photo finish itself, we've got about six or eight people taking pictures on three different cameras. So we've got an outfield, an infield and a backup. We control the timing boards around the four corners of the track. We also talk to the data who are in here and we also have the LPS system which does the GPS tracking and they are in here with us too so they feed us information if we need it. 
actually think it's really so fascinating to learn all of those technical things that go into making these world championships work. And now we're getting ready to meet another athlete. Today, it's Raven Rogers. She's an 800 meter runner who actually went to school right here at the University of Oregon. When I reflect on my journey, it's about proving the impossible. It's about believing in yourself when the odds are against you. And with an Olympic medal in my pocket, the goals just became even bigger. Off the track, I enjoy exploring my artistic side. The way I race and train is a form of art in itself. Now I have the chance to showcase my craft to the world in a place that is part of my heart. The World Athletics Championships are coming to Hayward Field at the University of Oregon, a place where I have fought for victories and for my team so many times before. For me, they are coming home. The track is my canvas and the result is my masterpiece. Next stop, Oregon. Today's legend is particularly exciting for me. He's an American decathlete, a world and Olympic champion, a former world record holder, and one of my personal idols. This is Ashton Eaton. My name is Ashton Eaton. I am a two-time Olympic gold medalist, two-time outdoor world champion, several-time indoor world champion, and we're sitting here in beautiful Hayward Field, where I trained and went to school uh, for several years. What Hayward Field means to me is the place where my life changed from being a small town kid from the middle of Oregon somewhere to this person who achieved things in sports, got to inspire you know, young athletes and the future generations of sport, all because of really this, this facility and the things that surrounded it. I did retire when um, I was 29 and maybe arguably at the top of my game. Um, but you know, here I am five years later and it's because I still love the sport. It means a lot to me. I follow it very closely, especially the athlete stories and the athlete performances. The very first international introduction I got to track and field that blew my mind and, and showed me the possibility with the sport was the World Athletics Championships in 2009 Berlin. Still one of the best track meets I've ever been to in my entire life. To continue to be part of it after so many years and kind of give back in a new way, in a different way, is very meaningful um, and very, very grateful to be able to do that. Today's athlete is the current Olympic champion. She's an 800 meter runner. This is a thing, Mo. How would your family describe what you do? Incredible. How would your friends describe what you do? Amazing. Now, how would you describe what you do? Hard work. Describe your sport in three words. Deadly, lactic, graceful. <laughs> what does being an Olympian mean to you? It means you have reached the highest pedestal of sports. What's your guilty pleasure? Mochi ice cream. What does mental health mean to you? To have good mental health. It's being at peace with where you are at and not paying any attention to everything that's going around you. What's your favorite way to practice self-care? Taking care of my hair. What would you say to a younger you right now? Everything that you're hoping for is right around the corner. What do you run for? I run for God's pleasure. What do you want your impact to be? I'm hoping to inspire everyone to be a go-getter, whether that's their personal life or athletically, just to always go after what they dream for and to not pay attention to everything else going on. What's next? Years and years of world championships and Olympics, and hopefully years and years of gold medals as well. So I was just checking out the very first sports virtual museum in the world. It was amazing. And if you're in Eugene, you can go ahead and check out this awesome exhibition where we show you memorabilia from athletes of the past. Let me go ahead and show you a little bit more about it. Same bowl, looks pretty cool.
To see Jesse Owens' iconic jersey in person is honestly inspiring. And I think it's the perfect way to cap off our show. So we have amazing competitions ahead, so stay tuned. And I'm gonna see you tomorrow for the World Athletics Club.